Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, your YouTube shop teacher. This time with tips number 467, which is part two of my series on the Lyle Drill Grinder model 91000. Make sure you go back and watch tips number 466, which is part one. Now, if you'd rather grind your drills, sharpen your drills by hand, I'll put the uh, name of the video on the screen uh, where you can observe how to do it by hand, but this is strictly how to do it with the Lyle drill grinder. In the previous video I showed you how to set up the Lyle drill grinder for sharpening drills and I did several of the half inch diameter drill bits, but in this video I intend to do some larger drill bits as well as some smaller than half inch. And I'll start out with some three quarter bits. Here's one I did in a practice session. That's a three quarter. But notice that uh, this one is a bit shorter, so it's going to end up having a thicker web. Also, it is one that has uh, some considerable damage and nicks in it, and the nicks have to be taken out. So we have to remove enough material to, to clean that up, which is typically probably about to where my th thumbnail is. So in other words, at least about a sixteenth or a three thirty seconds of an inch has to be removed. Notice that it already has a pretty thick web. So let's get this set up. In the previous video I showed you how to dress the wheel. Well, there are no grooves in the wheel yet. It's in good condition so I don't need to redress it. But notice again that I have removed the, uh, the eye guard on here. And the purpose is because this is in the way for filming. Never remove the guard for any other purpose than what I am doing here, but I am wearing a full face shield as I perform this video. So be sure and do that. Protect your eyes at all costs. A couple observations here before I start grinding. In the previous videos where I rebuilt this machine, painted it, and uh, did the reconditioning and everything, I was lamenting that uh, I could not figure out how the wheel guard was held onto the motor and several people pointed out that what probably happened here is this is a replacement motor not the original motor and that's why there was no provision for a guard. I had said in previous videos they did not tell you what the size of the wheel was they just gave you a parts number well somebody pointed out there it is grinding wheel specification is five by three quarter by one by 60 grit so it was in there but uh, I just missed it. And another thing I want to show you before I get started here, I had talked about damage uh, to these drill bits and the one that I showed you just a minute ago, I'm, I'm not going to deal with that. I, I did that in a practice session, but when you run into drill bits like this that have wear or damage to the margin right here, you need to either throw that drill away, especially if it's short, or it would have to be cut off right about here where my thumb is. Can you see that the margin is worn away right in here as compared to this section right here. So watch for that on drill bits of all sizes and discard those bits. This is one that is destined for the scrap bin. I'd also like to point out that it's a terrible mess when you have a grinder on your workbench here and I'm doing this only because of, uh, this is my demonstration bench, but it, I've really got a mess here. I've got this grit just everywhere from dressing the wheel. So as we've talked about in other videos, really grinding needs to be in almost a separate room in a shop, but I don't have the provision for that here, but I uh, just wanted to point that out because it is a heck of a mess and that dust goes just everywhere and it is destructive and abrasive. All right, let's get back to this. And as I mentioned, I'm going to start out with three quarter inch drill bits. And the reason I threw that one away that I just talked about that had the damaged margin, damaged margin, I must have about 10 three quarter inch bits. So uh, that's why I'm not trying to resurrect it. Okay, in review now, there are several things that we have to do in setting this up, just in case you haven't seen the previous video, but I have this set for three quarter inch uh, diameter. That was done by loosening this bolt right here and uh, swinging the indicator here to three quarter inch and then I've also changed the setting here just a little bit on the clearance I'm just a little bit below the mid mark 
And now I'm ready to put the drill bit into the V-block. Alright, I've loosened up this screw and I'm moving this guide to the far right. And remember that this black line, which also has a, a scribe line here if you can see it, I want to rotate this drill bit such that the cutting lip here is parallel to this. Now that's a little bit of a hard concept here, so back and forth, back and forth till it appears to be approximately parallel. And I'm snugging this up just for the moment here. Now I can swing the guide over and you see I'm just barely catching the drill bit. And I need about one-eighth of an inch sticking out. Remember there was a gauge for that but I'm just doing it by eye or take your scale and see that you've got about an eighth of an inch there. Now I can lock the guide by tightening the screw and you may or may not, depending on what drill bit you ground last, have to move this in this direction that would be done by loosening this but I, I'm okay because I'm catching just a little bit of the margin there that, that's how you want to set it and then the stop can be moved up against the tang and you may need to make an adjustment here on this uh, other V block but it's okay right where it is don't try to catch it on the taper it needs to be someplace here on the uh, flutes so now the fixture is ready to put into the machine. I'm ready to grind. And with the lever here, with the red handle, I can move the drill bit in or out. And I want to catch it here right about in a good spot on the wheel without any possibility of grinding the little guide or self-destructing that little guide into the wheel. Looking down here, the feed screw, remember we have a spring-loaded collar right there that can be locked with this thumb screw, but I'm not going to do that until I finish the first lip. We can advance the drill bit into the wheel with this feed, and we'll do that very slowly until we get uh, our first sparks. Do, do not advance into the wheel abruptly. It needs to be very gradual, and we do not want to burn the drill bit or damage it and remove any of the heat treat. Remember we cannot sharpen carbide drill bits on this, at least not with this wheel. I don't know if I mentioned that previously. Remember you need very good lighting when you're doing this. Wear your safety glasses and this is the part, This you're looking down here between the wheel and the drill bit or you might be looking in this direction. The eye guard may be in the way but make sure you do use it. Now I'm ready to actually start grinding. Here we go. I'm done with the first lift. So I will tighten this screw. Now I can back off the feed screw here until I have clearance such that I can remove the fixture without striking the wheel. And then take a look at it. Now it did not clean up quite here on the heel. I may come back to that, although that doesn't really matter. I will rotate, loosen the clamp and rotate the drill bit 180 degrees, bringing the guide again up against the margin. And then reinsert this into the machine. And I'm ready to grind the second lip.
and I have fed up to the stop right here so that both lips will be equal all right now let's examine this drill bit first of all this is a Cleveland bit but it's a little bit different in the geometry right here compared to some other drill bits as you can see and because of that you're seeing it's just a little bit different here on the heel but that's just fine it appears that it didn't clean up but but it is fine you can see that both lips are equal in length and using the gauge I'm right on 59 degrees I could check the other side but there's really no need and then as far as the chisel point angle which we want to be somewhere around 135 and this protractor is set now for for 135 you can see the chisel point is pretty much right on so that's a good grind we have relief here between the lip and the heel I'm not measuring it but you can see that it is noticeable relief so that drill is ready to cut ready to drill let me also say that at this point if you have several drill bits that are in the three-quarter range that is around the size that we have here go ahead and sharpen them at this time because the fixture is ready to accommodate three-quarter inch drill bit so don't go down to a half inch and then have to come back up to three-quarter inch because it's very fast to do this if that uh, fixture is preset and there's one that I did the other day as well it's also a, a Cleveland I think yeah that's a Cleveland Cleveland to me or, or the premium brand so that's how you sharpen these larger drill bits and it would be the same all the way up to one and one eighth which is the maximum and that will use pretty much the entire face of the wheel from time to time you'll have to dress the wheel the wheel will get dull and glazed and then you're going to see that the finish isn't so good but we want to make very sure that the lip here is in good condition because that's what it's all about this is the lip here everything else is just uh, it allows you to to get the, the right angle on the lip for cutting another thing you might want to do if you have to do a regrind I sometimes take a sharpie and and I blew the end so that as you start to grind you can see where the material is be t being taken away now that's not a problem if it's a dirty old drill bit but if it's one where I would want to put this back on and it's already relatively shiny it's hard to tell sometimes where you're grinding so take that into consideration using a sharpie now I will sharpen some quarter inch bits it's going to be a very common size a little bit smaller harder to see I encourage you to throw away drill bits if you can afford to that are already quite short and the shanks are already chewed up you know because they're going to have thicker webs they just aren't worth saving with uh, saving unless you're really on a budget also if you run into drill bits like this this is a brad point made for woodworking uh, don't try to do that on this machine but here are several quarter inches that I'm going to work with all right as I start to grind these quarter inch drill bits notice that I have it set on quarter inch here or I'm pretty darn close and that'll allow you to to uh, grind just a little bit above or below quarter inch I've kept the clearance right here the same I didn't change that I may need to change it I have removed this v-block as it simply would be in the way so I'll insert the drill bit and I guess uh, I need to tell you again possibly take the bit out and I've already moved the guide back to accommodate this size drill bit but again in loosening this one and this is a hard concept that's why I'm, I'm going over it again again move the guide all the way to the right and you can see drop that out of the way as I snug this up it 
that it's parallel now with the smaller bits it's almost right in line with the lip so that's where I want to be now I can move that over until it touches I think I have to move it back just a little bit and I want the drill bit to stick up 3 30 seconds of an inch and you can either measure that with your ruler or if you do have the genuine uh, Lyle drill gauge that came with it. Remember this is a mock-up. I talked about that in the first part. Well, I go ahead and use the small side of that and then bring this up. And that's why I said to remove this. It, for the smaller bits there's no room for this. So you take that out of the equation altogether. Now I'll tighten that up and it's ready to grind. And one other thing that you might have to do as we get into the smaller bits, looking back here, I already moved the entire assembly a little bit forward here so that I have the reach that I need with this. So, and that will vary on the drill bit size and probably your machine. Looking at it from this angle now, several things. First of all, notice there's quite a bit of play in this machine. Either that was the tolerance when they made it, but more than likely it's wear from all the grit and all the grinding it's done over the years. But if you're looking down in here, that's, that's what you want to actually do as you're grinding. And don't get so close to the guide here that you damage it. it there may be the need to reposition the drill bit at some point, especially if the end was badly damaged and uh, you were removing a uh, a fair amount of it. So here we go on the first one, the first lip of a quarter inch drill bit. Now on these smaller bits you probably can rotate the bit 180 degrees without removing the fixture from the machine by backing this off. Make sure that the motor is not on, loosening up the clamp rotating it 180, snug it up, and then bring it to the stop and tighten. A word of caution that on the very small drill bits they will heat up very rapidly and discolor so you got to be careful and take light feeds with a sharp wheel. And there's the drill bit that I just sharpened. You can see it's got plenty of relief there, not too much. Equal lips. And the point looks good, the chisel point looks good. I'm not going to take the time to uh, measure that with the protractor, but I would say that's a good grind. Sometimes you're going to get just a little bit of a burr right here, a grinding burr. Knock that off. Again, if you sharpen this correctly, it will produce two chips as you drill, even uh, of approximately the same uh, size chips. You can see that burr coming off of there. So that's how you sharpen uh, smaller drill bits and maybe go down to 3 16 I wouldn't recommend even going uh, any smaller than that. It's just going to be a frustration for you, but you can do it. it do the machine does have the capability, but it's just uh, you got to have good eyesight, good lighting. Here's the quarter inch drill bit that I just sharpened. Let's see if it makes two chips. There, did you see that it was making two chips? That's kind of the acid test as to whether you're uh, grinding was successful and that both lips are the same. Well that concludes a rather lengthy series on the Lyle drill grinder, the restoration and the use of the machine. Hope you enjoyed it. Perhaps some of you out there own one of these and that will help you. If not, maybe you enjoyed some of this just for the pure entertainment value. Thank you for watching my videos. Uh, continue to watch, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Tubal Kane. So long for now.